Good morning, Argentina. Good morning. How are you? Good. So it's early morning for you, but I see you already started the day with a big smile. Are you ready for the interview? I am. I'll try my best. Okay. So let's start with the question that everyone asks you when they meet you. Why are you named after a country? So my mom and my grandma are named after Argentina as well. And it turns out that after the Spanish Civil War, there was a lot of immigration from the north of Spain, where we are from, to Argentina. So it's not that of a weird name among older generation people. Oh, interesting. And if you could pick another country name for yourself, what would it be? I think America, in the hope that things will get better, uh, or maybe Europa, because I, I like that it's the, na the name of one of Jupiter's moons. Oh, cool. Um, you're a neuroscientist. Uh, tell us about that cool experiment you did with rats doing um, your work. I think not one, but every single time I was able to see a neuron sending a signal in real time to another neuron using electrophysiology as a tool was always, was always the best. Wow, sounds really cool. And what was the one thing you loved about working with rats? They're super kind and super smart animals. And what was the one thing you hated about working with rats? After eight years working with them, I became allergic, so that was sad. Oh no. Um, Argentina, you're from the beautiful and sunny country of Spain. Mm -hmm. um, what are two monuments or places that you would recommend to everyone uh, when they go to visit Spain? I would say the Reina Sofia Museum in Madrid and the Alhambra in Granada. Nice choice. Okay, now you live in San Francisco, California. And tell us, what is so cool about living there? Uh, besides being where a lot of technology is developed, uh, the feeling of belonging to some sort of community, but at the same time keeping my anonymity. You work at the University of San Francisco. Um, scientifically, it's one of the most exciting places on Earth. What is some of the cutting edge science being done at the UCSF right now? Right now, they're collaborating in, the, in some of the clinical trials for the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, so that's pretty exciting. So your name is amazing, but your job description is even more amazing. So you are a biospecimen and genetics programs manager at the Memory and Aging Center. It just sounds so cool, but you have to tell us what do you do exactly? So the Memory and Aging Center studies people with dementia and dementia related disorders. So some people that have this type of disease and their families, they come to UCSF to participate in, in studies and in clinical and observational trials. So they will donate blood and the spinal fluid, that is what we call um, biospecimens, uh, for researchers all over the world uh, to be able to study those disorders. I am, so to speak, the gatekeeper of those samples and of all the genetic data that is associated with that. And what part of your job gets you most excited? It is the first time that I work with medical doctors and they believe they're going to cure Alzheimer's and dementia. And that is pretty exciting and inspiring. Nice. Um, now we all know that science gives to the society a lot, but what are the three things that science gives you as a scientist? Um, it gives me hope, um, challenges, and the ability to deal with uh, frustration and unknown and uncertainty of everyday life. And what is the biggest sacrifice you had to make as a scientist? Time. Time that I devoted to science and took it from being with people that I loved or doing things that I also liked. And scientists move around the world a lot. Um, they change countries, move away from their families, you did that as well. Um, is it worth it? Totally worth it, 100%. Good. Um, what science book would you recommend to the whole world population? Uh, 
I think in English it's called The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat by Oliver Sacks. That was also a neuroscientist. And what Spanish wine would you rec recommend to the whole world population? Alvarino, no doubt. Best <laughs> Spanish wine ever. I'd agree. Um, and how do you say in Spanish researchers' night? La noche de los investigadores. Okay. Now, tell me, what are your top two reasons for doing a PhD in science? Well, the first one, why not? Uh, and I think the second one is that it will, it will teach you a lot about yourself and make you stronger. Scientists can grow human brains in the lab. So this is now talking about your work specifically in your field. Um, so growing brains in the lab, what is the main advantage of this? That we can study the human brain without needing to decapitate people. And that's always a plus. Okay, that sounds <laughs> like a pretty big advantage. Uh, but apparently there is some controversy on whether these uh, lab brains um, can actually start to develop, to have some consciousness. What do you think about this? Well, we, we would need like a month to, to discuss this. Uh, so I think before we, we, as we address this, we would need to define consciousness. And that is still very controversial in, in the field of neuroscience. There's not clear agreement of what consciousness is, how it appears, what it implies. Hmm. But what is con what do you think is consciousness? So I think it's I think if consciousness was, let's say, the result of putting A plus B in a culture dish then uh, we could study consciousness in these fake uh, or artificial brains that were growing in the lab. But I see consciousness as an emergent property. So meaning that it's not only the sum of the components, it's not only A plus B, it's when we put A plus B together, they influence each other and then they, in the right moment, in the right conditions, then they, they develop new properties that are no, not those only from A or only from B. So I think consciousness is a bigger, is an emerging property from how our brains function, how they're formed and the inputs that they get for, from reality. And Argentina, if you were a millionaire, in solution of what two problems would you first invest? Um, education? and water potabilization, that would be it. And certainly two very important problems nowadays. And, um, okay, now fun question. Um, what would you like to be in your next life? Assuming, assuming that you would have one. <laughs> certainly not a lab rat. That's <laughs> what I wouldn't want to be. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, and tell me, which dead scientist do you wish um, had lived longer and had produced more science? I think uh, maybe Hilde Mangold. Hmm. All right, we have two more questions. So two last questions I will ask. Um, you've been to Bosnia. What was the most memorable food you had there? A uh, homemade liver stew. Interesting. All right, <laughs> any, any last words? Maybe in Bosnian. <laughs> uh, hvala. That's all I know. <laughs> okay. Hvala te Argentina. Good luck with all your work and come to Bosnia again. Thank you. We'll try my best if this pandemic allows. <laughs> okay.